All right, here's problem number one of uh, homework week eight. Okay, it says data on the weights in pounds of the contents of cans of diet soda versus the contents of cans of the regular version of the soda is summarized to the right, this table right over here. Assume that the two samples are independent, simple random samples selected from normally distributed population and do not assume that the population standard deviations are equal. Complete part A and B below. Use a 0.01 significant level for both parts. All right. So right now we're going to test the claim of the mean of two population. Keep in mind that in week eight uh, lecture notes, I gave you the steps to do that, to do the, the hypothesis testing, to test the claim of two of the mean of two populations. Now be careful because there are uh, different, in fact, there are four ways you can test claims of the mean of the mean of two populations. So how do you know which steps you're gonna follow? Okay, for example, here's the first one. When do I use these steps? When I'm working with independent samples and I know the standard deviation of the population of uh, first population and second population. When I was reading this problem here, I never read that we knew uh, the standard deviation of the population, or both population, in this case, the diet soda versus the regular soda. I don't know the standard deviation of the population of these cans of soda. So what does that mean? That I cannot follow this set of steps. I only can follow this when my samples are independent and I know sigma one and sigma two. I know the standard deviation of the populations, both populations. So let me keep scrolling down. And here comes the second set of steps when you're comparing the mean of two populations with the independent samples. So look what it says here. Uh, when do I follow these set of steps? When the samples are independent, I don't know sigma one and sigma two, which was the case here. And there's one more condition. Do I know if the variances are equal? Okay, if the variances are equal, it means that the standard deviations are equal. And when I look here, look what it says at the end here, do not assume the population standard deviations are equal. So that's my hint. What hint? That I should not be doing this, these steps. Why not? Because I only do these steps when the samples are independent. I do not know sigma one and sigma two. And when the uh, population variances are equal, or another way of saying that, that the standard deviation of the populations are equal. Okay, so keep scrolling down. Here comes the third set of steps. Okay, when do I use this step right here? These steps right here. When the samples are independent, I do not know sigma one and sigma two, and the population variances are unequal or not equal, which is the same thing as it was saying here. The do not assume the population standard deviations are equal. It's the same thing, same same idea. So I'm gonna be following these steps right here. So let's start following those steps. Let me lower this a little bit so we can start looking at all the information in these steps. Step number one, verify that sigma one and sigma two are unknowns. We already said that. Second, are the samples random? Well, we need to make sure that here it says random samples. Yes, look, it's right there, simple random sample. Next thing I need to check, are the samples independent? Yes, it was said also here, independent, simple, random samples. And the last thing I need to check, are the population normally distributed? And you can see here it says, selected from normally distributed population. So I met requirement number one. Now we're gonna go requirement or step number two. So here we go, step two, okay. It says, I then uh, write the claim mathematically. Okay, so H O N H one. So uh, let's see what was the claim. The claim says that the contents of can of diet soda versus the contents of cans of regular version of soda. Oh, that's not the claim. My bad. I read it wrong. 
Oh, here's the claim letter A, my bad. The te test the claim that the contents of can of soda have weights with a mean that is less than the mean of the regular soda. So there you go, that's my claim. Let me underline that. The cans, the contents of cans of diet soda have weights with a mean that is less than the mean of the regular soda. So when I go here, let me put this on the side. So the mean of the diet soda, that will be mean one, is less than the mean of the regular soda. We're gonna call that mu2. Okay, so mu1 diet soda, mu2 regular soda. And because this is the original claim, I'm gonna put in parentheses claim. Okay, every claim has a counterclaim. So we need to state the opposite of less than. Okay, so that will be mu1 is greater or equal that's the opposite of being less than mu2 however in our book in my stat lab uh, we don't use greater than or equal instead we just use equal so that's what i'm changing this to just equal after you have the two claims you need to label as ho and ha the claim with the equal is ho the claim without the equal is going to be h1 or H A. And I did step number one. Let me put show you the steps again. I did step, I'm sorry, step number two. Now we're gonna go step three. What is step three? Oh, we're gonna identify alpha, the level of significance. You can see here the last sentence, use a 0.01 significance level. So alpha is 0.01. And I did step three. Step four. Okay, we're going to find the degrees of freedom. The problem is we need to do two degrees of freedom and choose the smallest one. So let's start. I'm going to type it instead of write it. So we're going to start with the first sample, the diet soda. So DF1, that means the, the diet soda. How big was the sample? 40. Okay, so it will be 40 minus 1. So that gives me 39. And then I'm gonna do DF2. That means the degrees of freedom for the regular soda. And there was also 40, so it will be 40 minus one. So I also get 39. Choose the smallest one. They're both the same, so our degrees of freedom will be 39. Okay, if, if I had different numbers here, I would have chosen the smallest number, all right? Step number five, that's when we make the picture, okay? That's what we're gonna do now. Step five, the bell shake curve, here it is. I need to shake one of the tails. Who decide that? H1, because H1 has a less than, we're shading the left tail. And that's it, that's step five. Step six, okay? That's when we're gonna find what is called the test statistic using this formula here. All right, so I'm just gonna start plugging in T equal, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna write it. I'm gonna use my decimals calculator. I wanna go straight into it. And I'm gonna put all of this formula in here so I don't do the work double. So let's go back to my regular calculator, click on the fraction, I'm gonna type the top. And I have parentheses, X bar one, that's the diet. So it's 0 0.79401 minus X bar two, that's the regular X bar. Um, that's the, the regular soda, as you have said. So 0 0.80, 8851, close the parentheses, minus mu one minus mu two, because in our claim, we are assuming that mu1 is equal to mu2, when I subtract the mu's, okay, the population means I'm gonna get zero. That's what I'm gonna put zero here. Over, now I'm gonna put the square root inside. I have a fraction, what fraction? S1, that's from the diet, okay? So S1, 0 0.00447. What I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna square it, everything over, N1, and that was 40. Plus, now we're gonna do the next one, uh, S2. So that will be 0 0.00, I forgot to put the fraction. 
zero point zero zero seven five seven and I need to square that everything also over 40 because that's my n2 and you can see what I got here for my t usually the t t scores like z scores are two decimal places so negative 10.43 that's what I'm going to put here okay good I did step number six step number seven by the way don't forget that this number is the label of this mark right here in my picture okay and now the next step step number seven I'm going to find the p-value and how do I find the p-value well I want to know how much is shaded here that's the p-value but I'm not using the normal calculator how do I know because in step six the formula didn't start with z it started with t so I'm going with my t the p-value of the from the t calculator hey where did it go my calculator right here okay so careful because see I'm not using that calculator I'm using the p-value calculator for the t-test and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to type my degrees of freedom which is 39 I'm going to type my t value which is negative 10.43 I'm going to click calculate I'm going to get three answers but depending on my picture that's the one I'm going to choose I only shaded one tail to the left so I'm in the second one you can see a zero zero point zero and I did step number seven. Now I'm going to do step number eight. And what is step number eight? That's when I make the decision. I compare my P against my alpha. Okay, and who was my P? Zero. That was step seven. Who was my alpha? Step three, point oh one. And from left to right, what happened with P? P is smaller than alpha. And what is our decision when P is smaller than alpha? Look at this chart here. It says when the P is smaller than alpha, we're going to say reject HO. And I did step number eight. Now we're going to do step number nine. What is step number nine? The interpretation. Let me put it over here. Okay. And the interpretation depends on what was your decision. Reject HO. So I'm in the first row. And where is the claim? The claim is in H1, which is the same thing as HA, the last column. So I'm in the first row, last column. This here is my interpretation. And it says there is enough evidence to support the claim. And that's what I'm going to type here. Enough evidence to support the claim. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling in my different parts of my homework question. So problem the part A, they ask you to find the null and alternative hypothesis. So choose which one of these four look like I have here. And it seems it's going to be letter D. Okay, let me look again just to make sure. Mu1 equal mu2, mu1 less than mu2. So yes, and I'm going to check my answer. Okay, next thing is they ask me they asked me for the test statistic. That was step number six. And it's gonna be negative ten point forty three. Let me double check that I put that correctly. Yes, let's check our answer. I got it right. Next, they asked me for the p value. Well, that was step number seven. You can see it was zero, just zero. Check your answer. Okay. And the next step, they asked me to uh, to make the decision and the interpretation. That's a combination of step eight and step nine. So I reject HO. I have only two choices for reject is A and C. And what was my interpretation? Enough evidence to support the claim. Letter A says there's not sufficient. Letter C says there is sufficient. So it's going to be letter C. Check your answer. And I did part A. Okay. Now part B, they asked me to do a confidence interval like we did in week five, way back in week five. Okay. So basically, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see. They ask, they're asking me to make this the interval. So basically, I'm using this formula here and I need to plug in. 
okay so I need to plug in let's do it let's type it I need to plug in I'm gonna have to lower this because I need the numbers in parentheses x bar ones which is 0 0.79401 minus you can see here it says minus x bar 2 which is 0 0.80 uh, 851 close the parentheses I'm gonna have to extend this minus e oh I have a problem I don't know e but here's the formula to find e for this problem okay and I need to plug in in here all of this stuff okay all of these parts of the formula I already have s1 you can see here that's from the standard deviation from the dye soda. I already have S2, standard deviation of the regular soda. I need N1, sample size of the dye soda. N2, uh, sample size of the regular soda. What I don't have is TC. By the way, this formula comes from my stat lab. I prefer using TC, the label. And that we already learned that from week, uh, if I'm not mistaken, week five. How do we find TC? We're going to have to use the T calculator, not the P value T calculator, the T calculator that we use in week five. And I need to put my degrees of freedom, which in this case is 39. We did that already. I need to put my probability level. My probability level is the same thing as the significance level. So 0 0.01, calculate. You're going to get two answers like we did in week five. Which one are you going to use? The two tail always. So I'm going to use the positive one. And um, I'm going to use, let me see how many decimal places they want in my answer. They want three decimal places. So I'm going to be using, I'm going to round to three decimal places. So 2.708. That's my TC. Let me move this to the side so I can see it. So my TC is going to be 2.708. And then I'm going to plug in the rest, all of this in here. But I'm not going to write it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use decimals because I want to save time and work. Okay, let me leave it there. So let me clean this up. I'm going to type this 2.708 times the square root. Now I need to put what is inside, which I had two fractions. Let's start with the first one. Uh, S1 squared, so 0 0.794, oh, I'm typing the wrong one, uh, 0 0.00447 squared over 40, that's my N1. Then I have another fraction, plus, she can stay inside the square root, plus fraction, now I'm going to type S2, 0 0.00757 squared over 40. There is my E. And because they want three decimal places, 0 0.004. Okay, so that's what I'm going to put here for my E. I mean, right after this, see, I did the parentheses X bar 1 minus X bar 2 minus e so 0 0.004 now that's for the left end for the right end okay i'm going to put the same two uh, all of this again but i'm going to put a positive uh, because i'm adding 0 0.79401 minus 0 0.8851 close the parentheses and instead of a minus, it's going to be a plus 0 0.004. What I get from the first one here, it goes on this side. Whatever I get from this one goes on the right side. So let's do that in decimals. Okay, so let's put it in. So parentheses 0 0.79401 minus 0 0.8. 0851 close the parenthesis minus 0 0.004 look what I got negative 0 0.0185 
So on my left box, I'm going to put that number. I'm going to have to look at it again. So let me put it here on the side so I can see. Um, no, in my decimal calculator, that's what I have it right there. Negative 0 0.0185 negative 0 0.0185 but because they want three decimal places should be 19. okay and now i'm going to do the same thing in decimals okay i'm using the same numbers but instead of subtracting here after the parentheses it's an addition and look what i got negative 0 0.01 if i round to three decimal places negative 0 0.011 negative 0 0.011 again let me double check that I put does the number correctly all right and I'm gonna check my answer and I'm done I hope this helps